If you've ever sat there and wondered, my sore throat really hurts and I've seen the doctor and he didn't give me any antibiotics, what's up with that? Well, we doctors have a secret scoring system and in this video we're going to be talking about that. It's not really that secret we learned in medical school, but I thought I'd share that with you. As well as why antibiotics won't work on all types of sore throats, it only works on a specific type of sore throat, as well as why we doctors tend not to want to throw lots of antibiotics at people as if they're Skittles. Before we jump into the super top secret juicy scoring system, I think it's important to know that antibiotics only work on about 10% of sore throats, your strep throat or your bacterial sore throat. 90% tend to be viral, irritants, allergies, reflux, and many other causes of sore throats, and antibiotics won't work for those ones. I've got a video uh, that I'll link at the end of this video uh, that tells you some home remedies you can use for those kind of sore throats. So what are the dangers of giving antibiotics when somebody has a viral sore throat? Well, think of it this way. If every doctor in the community was giving antibiotics when there were viral infections, you start to get a massive increase in the amount of antibiotics given. And bacteria will begin to build a resistance because they're coming into contact with this antibiotic. What happens is these bacteria that have built a resistance begin to pass on their genetic material because they're the ones that have survived. And more and more of these resistant bacteria begin to develop. Further on down the line, somebody who gets very seriously ill is more likely to get this resistant strain of the bacteria. So when you're in the hospital and you're trying to give them antibiotics, those antibiotics won't work on them because they are now super mutant bacteria. This is super, super bad. No, not like that. That's a good film, actually. But I mean, is this is terrible because you're building super mutant bacteria when you don't really need to. What we need to do is find a way to risk stratify when somebody has a bacterial sore throat and give them antibiotics then, and try and work out when somebody has a viral sore throat and don't give them antibiotics. And that's what risk scoring systems do. There's a few different risk scoring systems and the one I use is called Fever Pain. There's another one called Centaur, which is also pretty good. With the Fever Pain scoring system, the first question is, does the patient have a fever over 38 Celsius or 100 and something Fahrenheit? I don't, I don't know who even uses Fahrenheit anymore, but I'll put the number when I've worked it out. The second one is, do they have some exudate on their tonsils or on the back of the throat, which is basically pus, white spots, lots of gunk at the back of the throat. The third one is if they attended within the first three days of the onset of symptoms. I guess what that one will try and work out is if their symptoms are severe, they're more likely to attend within the first three days of illness. Fourth one is are their tonsils severely inflamed? That means they're super red, super swollen and uh, injected looking nasty tonsils. And last one is, is there an absence of a cough? Oftentimes with viral infections, you will get a cough as well as a sore throat, but with bacterial infections, there may be an absence of a cough. And that's again, a, a criteria that needs to be looked at. All in all, you've got five criteria right there and one mark for each one, which can give you a total of five out of five. When somebody has a score of five out of five or four out of five, I tend to give antibiotics because their chances of having a bacterial infection is fairly high. When the score is two, two to three, I tend to go for more a delayed approach for antibiotics. So I try and educate the patient and say, look, your, your chances of having a bacterial infection uh, is still there, it's still possible, but it may be viral, so let's do this. Let's look at this, this, and this. Monitor over the next 48 to 72 hours. If you feel like you're getting worse, your temperatures are higher, the, the pain is getting worse, you're feeling shivery, any of those symptoms, then I want you to take the antibiotics. If their score is zero or one, I tend not to give antibiotics. I tend to go for, a, again, a watch and wait approach, telling them it's most likely viral, but specific things to look out for in case they get worse. So it can be super frustrating when you go and see a doctor and they tell you it's a viral infection so you can't have antibiotics. Everybody's sore throat is the worst thing to them in that moment in time and it feels super severe. So with that in mind, I think as doctors, what we've got is scoring systems like this. We try and weigh up the risk to yourself and the community and make a decision based on all that information. Caveat to a scoring system like the fever pain score is, yes, we do use it, but also there is a lot of clinical decision-making going on. For example, if I see a patient who is on medications that are dampening down their immune system, uh, my threshold for giving them antibiotics will be a little bit lower. And also say if they've got multiple other comorbidities or they present to me and they look a little bit more ill than the scoring system would show, I would still probably go down the route of antibiotics um, just because 
with one of these things, you are going on experience, you are going on clinical judgment, a scoring system that you know just simply tells you a score doesn't reflect how you are seeing that patient at that moment in time. Thank you for watching, and if you are new here, my name is Khaled, I am a family doctor, and I make weekly health videos, and if you like the sound of that, there is a subscribe button and a bell button with your name on it. There's also something else with your name on it, and that's video over here. It's a video about sore throat and home remedies that may help them. So please have a look, feel free, have a little browse. You don't have to buy anything. You can just you know look and you will always get a receipt. You can always just drop back in and return any videos you, you didn't want to watch. So peace out, I'll see you on the next video.